By now you've already seen a ton of unboxing videos of the Mavic Air 2, but if you want it real, blunt, technical and honest, stick around. Hi, I'm Ashwin Droning On, and people have been complaining about just how long the Mavic Air 2 has taken to arrive. However, it did appear yesterday, and so we're gonna now open this box and have a look at what's inside, but we're not just gonna talk about hyped up nonsense. We're gonna open this box from a technical and analysis perspective to help you guys decide whether you should buy one. So here we've got the Fly More combo, which includes some extra accessories, and isn't that a pretty first sight? When you open the box, you get a lovely leather carry-all. Also in there is a little wallet, which I guess has props and instruction manuals as well. You get tons of spare props with the Fly More combo. So that's really nice because if you do happen to damage any, at least you've got some spares. So anyway, let's get onto the drone because let's face it, none of us really want to see the props. Okay, let's open up the main bag. Look how they packed everything in there. Pretty good job, DJI. <laughs> so there is the drone. Oh, look how tiny it is. Now, the size of this thing may actually surprise you quite a bit. And we will later on be putting it next to some other DJI drones so that we can get a decent comparison of size. But until then, let's just have a look at what else is in this bag. I'm gonna take everything out. And in fact, that's it. So the bag's really nice quality, it also has a nice smell to it. Here we have a transmitter controller, yay, oh, okay. We'll come back to that thing in a minute. So with everything out of the bag, let's have a look at what we have in this box. This is gonna be our batteries, our power supply, and possibly some cables as well. Yep, there we go. So we've got a little EU connector, we've got the power charging block, we've got a multi-charging block as well. So this is the great thing about the Flymore Combo, not only do you get more batteries, but of course you also get a multi-charger block to charge them all in one go. So you're not having to wait and charge each battery individually. On the side of that, of course, is the connector where you plug in the charging brick. You also, of course, get with the Flymore Combo three batteries in total. You get two here, which you get packaged separately. And then there's also, of course, the third battery attached to the drone in the packaging. So bearing in mind the flight time of this drone is 34 minutes. With three batteries, you're gonna be flying for over an hour and a half. Finally, of course, you get a ton of props. Now you do get more spare props in the Fly More Combo than you do normally. The actual drone doesn't ship with any props fitted. And so of course, these are not all spares. Actually, you're gonna be using one of these packs to install onto the drone. Now, of course, we can't fly this drone until the batteries are charged. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is get the charging brick all plugged in and set up. I must say these new charging brick connectors are not quite as nice as the original connectors on the other drones. They're a little bit smaller and they're a little bit hard to pull out of there. Put the other batteries on there. I guess they just slot on like that. Yep, there we go. And this one. And I'm gonna leave the third battery attached to the drone for now, but I'm just gonna go and put that on charge now so that at least we are all ready to fly. So having plugged it in, I also noticed that this charger does not charge them in parallel, which is a shame. It charges them in sequence. So you can see that this battery has started already. Only when that one's finished will this battery charge. So that is an important point to remember that you've got to get your batteries charged well in advance of going out flying because they charge sequentially and therefore it could take a couple of hours to get all three of them charged. Anyway, let's have a look at the drone. So there is the Mavic Air 2. I'm gonna take these little cushions off the motor ends like that so that we can actually get a proper good look at this drone. The weight is the first thing that really strikes me. This thing is very, very lightweight, especially when I compare it in hand to the Mavic 2 Pro, which right now, wow, that feels so heavy. And you can also, of course, there see the clear size difference with this drone. Now, obviously the Mavic Air 2 is not as small as the original Mavic Air, which I think the original Mavic Air customers will be a little bit disappointed about. This is a small drone, it is portable, but clearly it's not the sort of portable that does just fit in your pocket without you knowing it there, which was one of the lovely points of the original Mavic Air. However, it does have a nice little compact form factor and it, I mean, it's gonna fit in a suitcase, certainly without you knowing it's there. Another observation on this one immediately actually is when you unfold the arms on this one, there is no scraping on the lower arms as there is with the Mavic 2 Pro. That's something that has really irritated me ever since getting this drone. So if I unfold the arms here, 
not sure if you can see it, but just in this inner portion here, as you pivot this arm in, it scrapes, oh, and it's really cringeworthy because eventually it is gonna mark the chassis on the drone. So I'm glad that they have cracked that with the Mavic Air 2 because that is nice and a bunch of spare space there to avoid that happening. So I'm gonna fit the props onto the Mavic Air 2. Clearly a good first step because without those, we're not gonna be able to fly. Uh, there's two little packs of props here marked with uh, yellow and blue. And basically, you've got one set for one rotational way and the other set for the other rotational direction. If you've been flying any kind of drone, then you'll be more than familiar with that process. So the props, as we already know, are the low noise props. They're also absolutely identical in design to the Mavic 2 props. However, of course, this is a smaller drone and therefore the props on this drone are smaller as well. So whatever you do, please don't try and interchange them. Of course, you won't be able to anyway because the actual motor is a bigger motor on the Mavic 2 and they literally won't fit. So we'll fit the props onto their respective motors like that. So there's the drone with all the props fitted in its folded state. Now it does annoy me with these drones when they are in their folded state that you do have these props flopping around and of course you can easily remove them but I don't want to remove them because ultimately that's why this drone is folding because it's quick and easy to portable transport around. However it's something to bear in mind because also remember that if you don't take the props off when you're transporting it there is a possibility that these props can be twisted, bent and distorted even in the bag and so you've got to be careful there. So in their folded state, there's the Mavic Air 2 and there's the Mavic 2 Pro. You can see that there is a substantial difference in size there, but it's quite comical if we now also introduce into our comparison the little Mavic Mini. And that's when the Mavic Mini's advantages really do stand out. That drone is just tiny and this really is the pocket sized drone. The Mavic Air 2 is definitely not a pocket sized drone. And of course the Mavic 2 Pro absolutely isn't, unless you have incredibly big pockets. Now, before the Mavic Air 2 was released, there were so many leaks that we've already analyzed the technical elements of this drone, and so I'm not going to go into any of those now. We've already seen it. Certainly have a look at one of our previous videos in the description below, which talks about on launch, all of the features of the drone. And of course, we'll be testing those for ourselves in a forthcoming video. But for the time being, let's just unfold this drone now and see what it looks like. There it is, as you'd expect. It looks like every other DJI current range drone in that weird kind of gray color. Uh, but it's a very pretty drone. It's a very slender drone. The body is very, very streamlined and very thin. Just as a comparison, there's the Mavic 2 Pro. And you can just see how chunky the body of that drone is in comparison to the really thin and streamlined Mavic Air 2, which really is a slender, slender drone. Now, one of the bits that interests me most about this is the camera, which of course is a 4K camera, captures up to 60 frames per second, which the Mavic 2 Pro can't do, incredibly. One thing I notice immediately is just how exposed that camera is. Now, if I remove the gimbal cover on the Mavic 2 Pro, which I have to say is very easy to do, you can see that the camera itself is quite well covered there in some respects. Whereas if you remove the gimbal cover on the Mavic Air 2, you do it by pushing this really cheap feeling gimbal cover. I must say, I do not like this gimbal cover. Compared to the gimbal cover of the Mavic 2 Pro, this thing is solid plastic. This thing is flexible and a bit cheap feeling. But anyway, the camera really does stick out there quite a bit. It just looks quite vulnerable to me in some respects. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but um, it just looks, you know, original Mavic Air, the camera was very much enclosed within the drone's body almost. But this one just looks very vulnerable. You can see right into the underside of the gimbal here, which you couldn't really do on any other DJI drone before now, I would say in some respects. So just be careful of that camera. I think if you do crash this drone, that camera probably is going to <laughs> be, take the brunt of that impact. But there is the drone all kind of in its form ready to fly. Now obviously you need to take all of these little protective stickers off. I say need to, you actually don't need to. And I generally tend to leave some of them on because if I ever sell the drone, at least these elements of the body are protected and it's only really necessary to remove stickers that are attached to the gimbal. Besides that, these other stickers are absolutely doing no harm whatsoever. 
Let's have a look at the battery removed. Again, as with every other DJI drone, you just squeeze the sides of the battery and lift it up. That comes off very easily. And wow, with that battery gone, this thing just weighs nothing. It just shows that the bulk of the weight here is the battery. But then when you consider that that battery is giving this drone 34 minutes of flight time, it's hardly surprising. Clip the battery back in. Of course, I need to get that one charged. This new charging button and light is quite interesting, actually. I always really liked the new lights and button on the Mavic 2, but this again is a, an innovation. It's evolution, isn't it? And it's nice to see. Obviously, you've got all the obstacle avoidance sensors around the drone, except for on the top and on the sides. But yeah, overall, this drone does feel nicely manufactured. It doesn't feel like the Mini, which yes, there are compromises here, of course, because it has to weigh 249 grams, but this drone does feel quite cheap. In fact, if you remember when images of this first leaked out, people looked at it and said, there's not a chance that that's a real DJI drone but it was, <laughs> surprisingly. But this one does have that usual DJI quality feel, and that's because they haven't had to compromise on the weight as much as they did with the Mavic Mini. However, for Europe, there are some implications on this being 570 grams. When the new regulations come in force later this year in the UK and in most of Europe, that will mean that drones over 500 grams have to comply with a certain classification and this drone may have some issues there and that's why in our first video what's wrong with the Mavic Air 2 we raised the point about weight because for UK and Europeans that is a serious problem. The other issue of course is that I'm in Sweden and of course when I ordered this drone I got the non-AirSense version of it and that means it hasn't got the circuitry inside for ADS-B and that is a massive shame. I wanted it and that's why that is a big problem with this drone. But in terms of build quality and the, the size of the drone, DJI have not let us down here. It is a really, really pretty looking drone. It's a great size. It's not pocket size. It's not as small as the original Mavic Air, but perhaps that leaves open a gap in the market for something between the size of these two. Anyway, enough about the drone. Let's get on to this controversial thing. That's the new controller for the Mavic Air 2. Uh, yeah, so we've got a function button, a button here for switching camera mode, power button, return to home button, and a switch in the middle, which is nice for the normal tripod and sports mode. I like that. I don't like the fact that the Mavic Mini's controller doesn't have that. This isn't the controller, it's the drone. But the Mavic Mini's controller doesn't have a switch. It's all in the app, which is annoying. So I'm glad to see that this controller does have that. We've obviously got our gimbal sticks here, which feel just the same as any other drone. And then on the top, we've got this interesting form of mobile phone mount, which also doubles as the OcuSync antenna. Now, there is quite a bit of extension on that. This is the Samsung S10, so it's a really big phone. And as you can see, it actually extends beyond the size of that. So this controller will happily accommodate the bigger version, the S10 Plus, or I think if you've got one of the Apple phones, the bigger version that's comparable. But it is very easy to put the phone in there. It's certainly easier and less fiddly than this annoying, oh, I hate, hate these transmitters. Um, I like the style of this piece. I like the layout here and the telemetry that we have, but I hate this horrible, fiddly nonsense. And that's why actually, given the choice, I would scrap both of them and just use the beautiful smart controller. Now, DJI have confirmed that the smart controller will eventually have compatibility with the Mavic Air 2. So we're just waiting for that to happen now via a firmware update. But this controller coupled with this drone will be absolutely lovely. But anyway, back to this thing. It isn't pretty. It's not modern looking. It looks like something from 10 years ago. I have many complaints about this, but one of them is this horrible system for the cable. In here, they've tucked the cable connector that connects to the actual phone, and it's just kind of wound up in here a little bit, and that is just scrappy. This whole piece here of the controller just feels utterly wrong to me. I really don't like that. Anyway, we'll put that bit to one side for now. We've got a dial wheel here, which of course is gonna be for the gimbal. We don't have a dial wheel on the other side, which most of us like to use for our exposure adjustment, manual exposure, 
We don't have that, that's a shame. Instead, we've got a record button, start and stop recording. Then on the underside, we've got a USB-C port. Nice to see that. And we've got our transmitter sticks, which, yeah, interesting placement for those. It just feels like an afterthought, this controller. Feels like they kind of designed a lovely drone and then thought, oh, how are we gonna control it? Eh, we'll just whip something together quickly. In terms of how it feels in the hands, it actually doesn't feel so bad. It feels about the right size, I like that. It doesn't feel too small, it doesn't feel awkward. In fact, if I compare it to the original controller, the proportions are almost identical in terms of the sticks. Of course, it is much more chunky from a depth perspective, but the width of it, it's almost identical. Then we've got the smart controller, which, oh, I love this thing. That is a much bigger beast as you would expect. However, it is, saving you the necessity to attach your phone to it. That alone justifies the fact that it is bigger because it's just easier. And of course you've got this beautiful display on the smart controller which has a ton of nits. Nits is the brightness rating and that means it is lovely and bright and just overall lovely to use. If you don't have a smart controller, it's very expensive, but I can't say how much it's worth buying because I can turn this on and within 30 seconds I can fly. So yeah, put simply, I don't really like this controller. The sooner I can get rid of this and fly the Mavic Air 2 with my smart controller, the better. So first impressions of the Mavic Air 2. Great build quality, the weight of it is super lightweight compared to the Mavic 2. Of course it's heavier than the Mavic Mini, but that's to be expected because it is, it's twice the weight. But the overall build and yeah, first impression, Really nice, it is a lovely looking drone. I do really like this new front look to it as well. A little bit more of a mean look to it, which is good. And yeah, really looking forward to getting this thing up and flying. Now, whether it would replace my Mavic 2 is another question because the Mavic 2 is gonna have far better wind handling capabilities. It's going to be a more solid drone, and perhaps a more solid video platform in the air. That's yet to be seen and hopefully we'll be testing that very soon. Although at the moment it's blowing a gale. Hmm, perhaps it's an ideal time. But overall, the drone, I like. Don't like how exposed the gimbal feels. It seems to be sticking out towards the front of the drone far more than past DJI drones. And it seems very, very exposed here. So if you do have a bump with this one, you might have a problem, but fly it carefully, be a competent drone operator and you won't crash it. Now, on the other hand, is this, ooh, I don't like it. I really, really don't like this. And I don't know what DJI were thinking, especially with this. It just isn't right. <sighs> but it is what it is. And hopefully I can throw this away soon or give it to a viewer and fly with my smart controller instead. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that button and also hit the bell because we will be producing a load more videos with this over the coming two weeks or so. Comment below with what you think about what you've seen here and our blunt honesty. This isn't a hype first impressions. This is a real analysis of the drone, unboxing it for the first time. So hopefully it's been useful to you guys. Links to the Mavic Air are in the video description. Comment below, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're a smeghead. Thanks very much for watching.